Revolution, the beginning of the uh, or the nineteen end of the eighteen uh, nineties, eighteen eighties, to the early part of the the twentieth century. Um, You know, assembly lines, um, more and more, more and more ways to get productivity up and reduce mistakes. So this is where work specialization comes into play. Now, with all of these, and they mentioned Henry Ford is one with the assembly line. Um, with all of these, there are trade-offs, meaning if you go to complete specialization versus more generalization of work, and the distribution of work, you can create frustration and even uh, oh, resentment and boredom and uh, higher attrition rates within your workforce because you're sick of doing the same thing over and over again. So there are, if, if something may seem like the answer, double underline, bold letters, this is the answer. However, we need to keep in mind that people are people. And if we, all you do for eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, seven days, or uh, 52 weeks or 50 weeks out of the year is put hubcaps on wheels, the same ones over and over again, pretty soon um, that's going to have an effect on you and whether or not you care. So there's a balance here. And that's why I want to point that out. There we go. That work specialization, productivity, and then impact on human, you know, the psyche, how we view I mean, our sanity, in, in, in essence. Departmentalization by function, the accounting department, the marketing department, the uh, athletic department, whatever it might be. This is a way, again, we're trying to organize tasks and uh, their structure in various forms all over the place. The choices aren't necessarily well-defined, but there might not be an only choice within an organization, but there might be one that's better than another given your competitive environment, uh, the customers you serve, the audience you serve, the clientele you serve, the school district, the whatever. If you can have control of it in some way, shape, or form, even small ways, how do you organize a classroom to get projects done if you, so, if you decide desire to use group projects. How do you organize it? How do you get the most out of the individual within a group? Chains of command, unity of command. Um, you've always often heard you go over your boss, over your boss's head. Now this might be fraught with political damage and uh, you might really regret doing this. People get kind of funny about that. Um, but sometimes it may be necessary to break through the bureaucracy and get to a point where you're actually getting things done. There are tra Everything comes with a, a cost in our decision-making and in the way we design things. Uh, flexibility is not the bad, worst thing in the world, but it's hard to manage. So change the command. Spans of control. How many people are you responsible? How many people can you be effectively be responsible for? If you're a CEO of a multinational company with hundreds of thousands of employees, your span of control, ultimately, you're responsible for everybody in a certain sense. Can you control them effectively? Now, we could argue that uh, information technology has made, our, made it possible to have spans of control much broader than they used to be, but nonetheless... Um, this is where training, honestly, where training and selection come into play. Because if you need people with a tremendous amount of direct supervision, you got a bunch of 14-year-olds or 12-year-olds or 10-year-olds or 6-year-olds, your ability to control them is uh, highly variable, shall we say. Now, uh, we've all met those teachers, or when we had those teachers in grade school or whatever, that never raised their voice but could control a class of psychotically crazy 12-year-olds. You know, they're just wound tight. Uh, but they had a, a way to do it. And it's hard to quantify that. By watching them, though, you could probably pick up some cues. But this is an issue. And this is an ongoing forever kind of an issue. 
centralized versus decentralized. There's a trade-off. Do we centralize all our processes, i.e. have a central bureaucracy? And that, whether you're a, a nationwide organization with 500 outlets, everything is controlled centrally. Well, now that can make sense in a lot of, lot of, lot of ways, but there's a trade-off there. You lose flexibility far away. Our, we're different way out here. We can't centralize that or it doesn't work as well. There's a trade-off. Decentralized, same thing. Now we've got flexibility to better meet or better serve clientele wherever they might be because they're different because it's, it's a big country, big world. However, we've got 500 places, got 500 places doing 500 different processes. So there's a trade-off. This is These are key ideas to understand, especially as you're you're going to make success of this course and your project. So really dive into and read this and uh, understand what's, what's being talked about here. Formalization, rules versus less rules, structure. Um, you know, the more I, it would drive me crazy to have to produce a lesson plan in detail and hand that to somebody and have them approve it. I, I'm temperamentally not built that way. I mean, give me the project. Let me go do it the best I can. Now, that's all. Can you can you trust everybody to do that? That that's really what it boils down to. Do you have the right person where they can do that kind of thing? They can work independently. And I can't answer. Nobody can answer that question until you know who's working for you. Bureaucracies, um, bureaucracies have their strengths and weaknesses. It's hard to make a mistake within a bureaucracy, but heck, it's hard to do anything. And mistakes can become ingrained into the culture. Not my job. Uh, you know, you got you didn't check this box, shoot it back on down. Obsession with rules. Obsession with chains of command. Um, this works okay if you work in a monopoly. Most businesses can't function long term as a bureaucracy. I mean, where it's it, it can kill you. And there's historical examples of this all over the place. Worst way to innovate or get anything done is a bureaucracy. Now, there are economies of scale in the sense that there are big businesses can get big things. Big organizations can do big things because they've got the manpower to do it. Okay, and I use the word don't, don't send me nasty emails. Manpower is a generic term. I know it's not the preferred term necessarily, but person power, all right? But that just sounds... I have a hard time saying that. So let's just stick with the old one, manpower. Uh, you know what it means. It's like saying instead of fisherman, you say fisher person. I mean, that kind of makes me want to throw up in my mouth, quite honestly. I don't. I can't quite deal with that. So humor me on this one. Um, but bureaucracies, it, it, this, there's a lot of security for the people working inside of it because, hey, I've got these very well narrowly defined activities. Okay, is that for everybody? No, I would hate working in a bureaucracy. I mean, I hate bureaucracies because they destroy things. They're the great crusher of the human spirit. Now, is everybody meant to work in the opposite, where it's kind of a wide open um, and here's strengths and weaknesses. The book does a great, great job of that. A matrix organization where you're working on different projects, different bosses, highly fluid environment. No. Some people will absolutely melt in that sort of environment. Here again is where selection, training come into the mix. Do we have the right people in the right spot? Do you want to, if you can't handle working in a bureaucracy, don't get a job in a bureaucracy. It's the other side of the coin. So this goes in a lot of different areas. So here we go. There's a matrix described. You can read the details of this. I'm just hitting you with the highlights again. Virtual organizations, uh, as we're doing here with uh, this online course or courses that you may take that are online, really that we're an on online or virtual organization. We're real. It's just we've, we don't have to worry so much about time and space. There are benefits, strengths and weaknesses to that for mature um, self-motivated individuals, this kind of course can work great. The opposite is equally true. It does not play well to procrastinators, so bear that in mind, please. Boundaryless organizations, 360-degree performance appraisals, we get it from everybody everywhere. Um, 
there are trade-offs, pros and cons to all these. If you just Google 360, 360 performance appraisals, pros and cons, you're going to find out more information than you ever wanted to know. Um, but if you're going to work on a matrix, that might be the optimal way to judge performance. So boundaryless organizations, the reason why is it makes us more quickly, able to more quickly respond to changes in the marketplace, in the world we work in. Bottom line, the more nimble we are, this is why the military has special forces that are small, compact, highly trained groups of individuals that can greatly project power beyond their numbers. It's the same reason why. They are like, a, like almost a separate army in a certain sense. Fascinating stuff. Downsizing organizations, if you go, uh, every, sooner or later everybody experiences this if they, you know, unless they're always in the same industry, and that's a very rare thing these days. Um, but suffice it to say that downsizing does take effect. I guess optimally, we would never have to downsize, but we would expand and contract, and we would uh, set people free that aren't performing uh, quickly, and we need to adapt to the marketplace. But this is, again, this is the antithesis of a bureaucracy and why that's uh, such a detriment to organizations long term. And just some, some diagrams for you to see that. Um, structures that differ in contrast, mechanistic versus organic models. Um, if we are a monopoly, we don't have any competitors. We, what do we care about innovation, cost minimization, and Im imitation? What do we care? Where else are you going to go but the DMV for your license plate? Do they have to be efficient? Do they have to be nice to you? No, where else are you going to go? Now, somebody sooner or later is going to figure out, hey, do we really need a DMV to do this? Could we outsource this? Do we, you know, as resources become, even though they can tax us to death, become more uh, precious? It might even force agencies to be efficient and streamlined. There you go. Strategy, structure, relationship, um, strategy, structural options. This is a great thing to understand. It's cause effect. What's my environment like? Let's design my organizational structure to fit the environment and to make it competitive. It, you have to grab hold of that if you're going to be successful in uh, org behavior. It's a means to an end. These are We're talking about tools. Size significantly affects its structure. There was, a, as, as an example for you, and you can look this up, the Skunk Works, a Lockheed corporate. Lockheed is a company that made uh, airplanes and continues to do aerospace company. Uh, Skunk Works made their secret airplanes for the military, by and large. Um, they were able to do, and this name, man's name was Kelly Johnson, was able to use you know, a fraction of the engineers, but he had operational 